Thank you, Dr. Cotton. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Anya. And good evening, everybody, and welcome to this uh, first Enlightening Minds lecture. Um, if you have found yourself concerned about the climate crisis, alarmed by what you've seen in the news, uh, especially if there are any of the students among us, I think there are, what you may have seen on TikTok, then this talk is intended for you. Um, the climate crisis is the great story of our age, but there is more than one narrative to it, uh, more than one side to the story. And I'd like to share this evening uh, a perspective, a personal perspective, on a side of the story that gets less news coverage than the weather, but which is actually, I think, much more interesting. Um, it's a story of hard analysis, scientific advances, incredible feats of engineering, ultimately politics, yes, and markets. Um, uh, but it's, above all, a story of hope, actually, and our own agency. It's the story of what we can do about the climate crisis. I'm Mark Melford. Uh, I run the boutique consulting firm CSL. Um, I have been a tech startup founder, um, and I'm an engineer by training. Um, I don't want to claim to be. I wouldn't want you to mistake me for an expert in climate change, or at least not climate science, but rather, through my work over 20 years with tech companies, many in this space, and also with governments, where I'm a former policy advisor, I have a point of view on this, and I've written about it and spoken about it. Um, uh, initially at my daughter's school, actually, Wimbledon High, where I went in to speak to some of the year eight girls more than a year ago, and which ultimately led to Anne inviting me to give this lecture. Um, and I'd like to maybe credit my daughter for inspiring this because it came out of the evident anxiety that young people in particular are clearly feeling about the climate crisis. Um, and certainly if you absorb that from the news, you know, it's understandable. I think the side of the story about what we can do about it receives much less attention. Um, and that's what I want to talk about tonight. Um, climate change can feel overwhelming like the house in this picture. Um, but there are different narratives. Michael Hume, the professor of human geography at Cambridge University, who stood in this room a year ago, posit posited 11 narratives of climate change, ranging from climate change as a crisis through to climate change as a story of scientific progress. And that's much more what I'd like to uh, focus on today. Um, I am here to, I hope, offer some good news and some heartening anecdotes and uh, examples of what is being done. Not it, to be complacent. I'm not saying don't be concerned. Do be concerned, because this is important stuff. Um, but rather like the house in this story, the, the house is not the problem, it is the symptom. And the flood here is the symptom of climate change. To really tackle things, we need to get to the root cause of what is going on. And the fact is there is a lot we can do and are already doing. Technologies are developing and which are developed, which will take us to net zero. We can actually already do all we need with the technology available today, and there will be more breakthroughs. So, this is not a geography talk. It's not even really a science talk. Um, though it is STEMI, it's sciencey and engineeringy. It features graphic and detailed depictions of charts and numbers, which some viewers may find disturbing, confusing, boring even maybe. But it comes in seven chapters, uh, which I will dash through. Are we ready? Let's go then. Chapter one is the plan, the overall approach and the mindset, which I'd like to just dwell on um, as a way of thinking about climate change. Two, generating power. Then decarbonizing everything, our lives, industries, and the things that we do. Four, a little intermission. I want to tell you a story about methane. 
Five, the supergrid, all will become clear. Six, and this is uh, hot off the press, carbon reduction and negative emissions, a fast-moving and very new topic. And finally, the path to net zero. Okay, a lot to cover, so let's go. Right, your first chance for a prize. Can anyone identify this molecule? Right, yes, you, sir, on the end. Uh, that's CO2. That is a CO2. There we go. You win a prize. <laughs> Audience participation. CO2. Right, carbon dioxide. And more specifically, the 39.5 gigatons of it that we emit into the atmosphere every year. How about this one? Oh, now we're getting going. You say right here. It's obviously me. Oh! <laughs> I'm going to need a new doofer. All right, the methane. Yes, and there we emit, so the maths is uh, tricky, the equivalent of about 31 more gigatons of CO2 a year, depending on how you do the maths. Sorry, I don't mean to do you out of your prize. You'll get another chance to uh, answer a question later. Don't worry. Um, so, really, it's, it's, so methane is molecule for molecule more warming than carbon dioxide, as you, many people may know. But it breaks down in the atmosphere relatively quickly, within 10 years. So, actually, in thinking about tackling the climate crisis, we have two crises going on simultaneously, and they are quite different. In the long run, it's all about the CO2. But in the short run, the next 10 to 20 years or so, there's a very significant problem with methane as well, and we need to tackle them both. Okay. And let's start, and this is the plan, uh, by figuring out exactly where they come from. So, in broad terms, 25% of all emissions are from electricity generation. And a further 24% from agriculture. That's arable farming, uh, it's livestock farming, it's forestry and changes of land use. 21% uh, from industry, all industry, everything we make, all manufacturing, including pharmaceuticals. 14% transport, again, all forms of transport. 6% is buildings, both building them and heating them. And 10% is other. And we can break it down further. If you take those broad categories, and let's have a look in detail. I've broken them down into little subcategories of different types of building, different types of transport, road, shipping, aviation, rail, for example. And let's have a look at the emissions by those categories in gigatons per year of CO2 equivalent. CO2 first, right? Now, straight away, you can see there are some marked differences. So, for example, road transport compared to shipping, aviation, and rail, you might look at this and say, well, look, it's all about road. We hear a lot about flying, and it's true that on an individual level, for any one of us, if we take a flight, that chews up a big portion of our carbon budget. So, yes, but globally, it's really all about road iron and steel, agriculture and forestry. So that all adds up to that 39.5 I mentioned, gigatons of CO2. Now, methane is very different. Methane is essentially concentrated in three sources only, and they are at the bottom of this page. Waste management is essentially landfill sites. Fuel production we'll speak about later. And agriculture, forestry, land use... This is the problem of burping cows, essentially, enteric emissions from livestock. So methane, unlike CO2, is very concentrated in a small number of industries. So if we can solve a few problems here... In fact, the whole point of showing you this slide is that what we've really done already is break this overwhelming-looking problem, like the flood, down into a series of still big but more manageable problems. Because if we had 12 strategies to, a, for example, tackle road transport, 
methane in waste management, then we would have gone a long way towards solving the crisis. This, if you like, is the approach. So what's the plan? Well, here's a start in terms of the general strategy to tackle a lot of this. Anyone guess what I'm going to say next? Oh, yes, you, sir, at the back. Electrification, well done. Oh, you might just have earned... I'm going to have to get some more of these. Do you think I can get it all the way to the back? Sorry, health and safety. There we go. Well done. Electrification, yes. So, in essence, here's a cunning three-step plan. We electrify the major uses of electricity. So, transport, what do we do? We electrify it. Housing, the heating and the housing, we electrify it. Industry, wherever we can, from cement making to steel making, we electrify it. Cows, we can't electrify, we'll come back to that. So this is the first step of the plan, or actually it's the second step, because prior to that, the power that these consume, we generate that power in a renewable way. And step three, the supergrid, we have to link the power generation to the uses with uh, a smart grid. Now, I want to say a word or two about each of these, and these form the first half of what I'm going to talk about this evening, really. So, that was chapter one. We're already on chapter two. How are we doing? Okay, 